Greetings everyone and welcome to this series on binary classification and the diagnosticity of a test. Imagine that a patient recently started to show COVID-19 symptoms. Naturally, we as physicians are worried and decide to perform a diagnostic test. The patient consents and undergoes the diagnostic test. Unfortunately, the re test result is positive for COVID-19. We already have prior knowledge that this test gives us true positive results in 99 out of 100 cases, which seems pretty good, right? Thus, we conclude that we have contracted the virus or the patient has contracted the virus with a probability of 99%. No, such a conclusion is based on the famous fallacy known as the confusion of the inverse. It is generally incorrect to equate the sensitivity of a test, that is, the probability of a positive test result when the disease is present, with its positive predictive value, that is, the probability of having the disease when the test result is positive. This concept can be better understood with the help of an example. Consider in an example that the probability that one is bleeding given that one has been attacked by a shark is close to one. Whereas the probability of just having been attacked by a shark, given that you are bleeding is almost zero due to the innumerous possibilities that can result in bleeding. The former scenario is an example of sensitivity while the latter is that of the positive predictive value. To answer this dilemma correctly, we require Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem teaches us that in order to obtain the positive predictive value, we need two additional pieces of information, the test specificity and the prior or baseline probability that one has the virus, that is the prevalence. To illustrate the concept of obtaining the diagnosticity of a test and understanding the sensitivity, specificity, a positive predictive value, negative predictive value and so on, we will consider yet another example. Imagine that we have a newer technique of measuring serum cholesterol levels. The currently used method is the gold standard method, but we have invented a new method. We have measured serum cholesterol with the gold standard machine in milligram per deciliter as seen in the first column and of our data set right here. And the second column represents the values as measured by our newer method. We uh, have used a cutoff cholesterol uh, value of 200 milligrams per deciliter and we will now set out uh, to explore the diagnosticity of our newer method. To do that, we will click on the plus option right here in JASP and select learn base checkbox which I have already selected. Now we will go to learn base and select the binary classification option under this drop down menu. Now since we already have raw data, we will select the load data and specify threshold option. However, if we did not have raw data and directly had values for true positives, false positives, false negatives and true negatives, we could select the uncertain estimates option and add these values in the data boxes right here. So true positive, false positive, false negative and true negative. If we had prior knowledge about the prevalence of hypercholesterolemia, the sensitivity and specificity of the test, we could enter it in this priors option. In our case, we will select the load data and specify threshold option as already selected here and add our data into their respective boxes. So serum cholesterol levels into the marker option and the result into the binary classification, which as you can see is positive or negative. We will also put in our value of 200 milligrams per deciliter into the test threshold option because that indeed is our test threshold of detecting hypercholesterolemia. Again, if we had prior knowledge about the prevalence and sensitivity specificity, we would uh, put in these values right here, but we will leave, uh, leave uh, them at the default options as uh, selected by the software. Now the software has run its analysis and will provide us with the output. 
as we can see with numerous values right here. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.